Hey guys, welcome to the next Critique the Community. Today we are critiquing long exposure photography. And uh, this was on my mind because I recently reviewed this filter system. I used a 16.7 stop neutral density filter. How long of an exposure was that? It was like an eight minute exposure during oh. the day, but at, as dusk went on, I mean, I could have done an hour long exposure super easily but I didn't want to wait around for that. So I, I, I kept stopping down and that trying to stay around five or 10 minutes. Yeah, anyway, um, if you want to be part of the next critique, we are going to do styled photographs. The idea is like something more polished and produced. Right, so we don't want to just see a girl, you know, some model mayhem model that you went outside and you took the same old shot. We want to see some thought that went into the idea of the entire shoot. We want to see uh, thought that went into the wardrobe. Hair and makeup, location, lighting, like the whole thing comes together. Did you build a set? Right. Are there extras in your shot? We want it to be a much larger production than just a standard portrait of someone. So if you've done a photograph like that, you can click on the link in the description and you can upload your styled photograph right now. Are you ready to get to this critique, Patrick? I am. This is the highest rated image. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, two one. one. Four stars. I mean, beautiful shot. You have any idea where this is? I'm gonna assume this is Iceland. It feels like Iceland, but I don't believe that I saw this waterfall. But that certainly does not mean that it's not in Iceland. Yeah, there was this book that just came out about Iceland. They literally pinpoint every location you can go and shoot at. Interesting. And uh, I mean, there's like 200 places. Yeah, it's we crazy. might have gone to 20. Does it explain how easy or difficult it is yeah, to get yeah, to them? Yeah, it tells you exactly how to get there and everything. Well, uh, I feel like this is a cool location. Great looking shot. Uh, the exposure is long. Doesn't feel like it's super long because you know it doesn't look like we have that much uh, detail loss in the water. And of course, we still have lots of detail in the clouds. But you know, I, I might say this is a uh, one or two second exposure. That's just a guess. I love this color toning. It's got a lot of magentas in it, and it's it's just a different color palette than you would normally see with um, this time of day, you know? I agree. Community rated this one. Keep in mind, this is the highest rated image, 3.64. So not that high. Cool shot for sure, though. Next up. Do you up. want to pick a random winner? Random winner. You know what I'm going to do? I picked these images this time. Uh-oh. They're going to be upset about that. Everybody's upset about everything. I <laughs> am going to choose this next one as the be second winner. You're going to give it away right away? Because this guy lost by one tenth or one one hundredth of a point. One one hundredth. So the last guy got a 3.64 and he won and this guy got a 3.63 and I was like oh and I think I might like this image better anyway. So if I he just would have given a guy. few more one stars to the previous image he would have won. <laughs> yeah you could have sabotaged the other guy better but because I'm a nice guy you're getting a tutorial too. Are you ready to rate this? I think so. Three, two, one. Four stars, we really agree. Cool. I mean, I, I like this shot a lot. Um, I, I love the look of the waterfall itself. Those tendrils of water, as Elia likes to say, uh, look really nice. It loses something in the foreground to me, and, I, and we're going to see some images coming up where we've got some you know, vortexes happening in the water that look really beautiful. And I'm trying to pinpoint, you know, is this too long of an exposure or too short of an exposure? Or is this just what the water looks like and it's just not that interesting of movement down there? But the foreground does not look as interesting to me as the waterfall or the beautiful sky. What's interesting to me about this photo is, one, you see all the stars, but it also appears that this is lit on a moonlit night. You There's some see, funny business going on here. Well, I mean, like it or not, I think it's a good composite, but yeah. you know, the average person I don't think would, would register that, but you can see the highlights on the rocks and the details, like look at the tree and the, the bush to the right of the waterfall. Yeah. It's got this nice highlight on the top and in a 
moonless night, you wouldn't see that. Yeah. But you probably wouldn't see the stars like that either. But we've been in situations where like the moon's rising at a certain point and then a couple hours later it's out of the sky. Yeah. So you could be able to composite that together. But I really like this. It's very different. I'm wondering if the foreground was shot almost in daylight. And this doesn't have like a super blue hour composite look to it though. This like when I look at this it feels like night and that's why I like it. I know, but we've also taken pictures before really long exposures at night and it can look like day. Yeah. You know, with enough exposure, it should look like day. It's, you know, a single light source. Uh, I just in think the sky. when you see the way those highlights are hitting the rock, it makes me think that there is something in the sky giving those reflections. Otherwise, that would be more flat, I think. But I don't know. If this is your picture, leave a comment in the YouTube comments. I'd love to know how this was taken. Next up. Now, during the last critique, people on YouTube were saying that uh, there was trouble in paradise between us. And they were like, man, Lee and Patrick are really going mm. at it. They're, I'm trying to remember the last one was. I thought it really was angry. pie and I in a hot tub. But no, what, no, no. What did we do last? I think it was you and me doing moody, oh, moody images. Moody. And I was moody Yeah. for everybody at home. We're uh, doing fine. We don't hate each other yet. No, I actually took a break from you. <laughs> But maybe, maybe <laughs> that's true. Right after that critique, you left the island. Yeah. You're like, I got to get out of here. Maybe I we'll, need some space. Maybe we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Why don't we critique this one? Three, two, one. You like this that much? <sighs> I think I do. I don't know. I mean, in a way, maybe this is my favorite of the three we've seen. I, mm. it's, it's tough for me. But I, I don't know that I would print this and hang this on my wall. That's my issue with a lot of landscape. I, I wouldn't hang any of these on my wall. It's right. like they're- They're so over the top. They're over the top pictures. Um, some of these that were coming up on though, I would, and we'll yeah. talk about that. But this one, you know, it's amazing, but it's like, it's so much going on. It's a really cool location. I think, yes, I think that's the issue I have is I'm so distracted and my eye goes everywhere in this image, even though it's probably composed pretty well, I don't see like a true subject of this, you know? I know yeah. it's the waterfalls, but I could see this where you go into a gallery and this is like one of the lesser prints and you see it off to the side and a lot of people might gravitate towards that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think to me, like this belongs in your portfolio, but I don't, for me, this isn't one of the, the fours or fives. Well, the community gives it 3.54. Moving on. This looks like a shot that I took in Mexico on that fancy Mike Kelly house that we did for photographing the world, or where Art Meets Architecture, two or three, I don't even know which one it was, but. Well, you took a picture like this? Yeah, it was a moonlit shot like this, mm. and it was a really long exposure, and like you said, sometimes it looks like daylight, Yeah. and it looked very similar to this. Three, two, one. All right, so I'm in between a two and a three. You gave it two, I gave it three. I feel like there's a lot of potential here in its simplicity. Yep. Probably what bother, bothers me the most about it is the junkiness on yeah. the sand. Yeah. I like the fact that it's kind of blurry and simple and there's no clouds. It's almost like an abstract painting. Oh, I, I like that too. When I look at this, that's the first thing I think is maybe I want a little more sand, but if not, I definitely want that sand cleaned up. Um, I think that's the biggest critique. I keep looking at this and thinking, is the square format working or not? I could go either way. Like I could see this printed in a hotel and it looks great in squ the square format. Yeah. But then I also see like that sensor dust that is on there, right? That's not my monitor. You are correct. I'm like, boom, take that out. Like that's immediate. So that's something you would immediately do on a two. Yeah. And it just looks like little seaweed. You know, we've got a big sargasm problem down here in uh, Puerto Rico. Look it up. Um, and it's obviously way worse than this, but it's just like junky seaweed on the beach. Never looks good. And so it pulls me out of this shot. Community gives this one 1 1.9. Pretty rough. So they agree with me is what you're saying. In that case, you're right. What in the world? This looks like a location where like, is it Devin Supertramp? That is a person. He would like have rafts on this cliff and they're like sliding down and <laughs> okay. they shoot off into the yeah. ocean. Yeah. Like, look at this thing. It looks. 
It's so I mean, wild to me, that it looks real. like something out of Game of Thrones or Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Like, I don't know where this is, but like it CGI. looks too perfect. Yeah. It looks human made or something. You would definitely destroy a camera. And what's at this interesting location. about this shot is the next shot is of the same location, different photographer. Mm, and so I, I didn't real. even mean it is real. I didn't even mean to pick this location twice, both images just stood out to me. And then afterwards, when I was compiling them all, I was like, oh, I picked two images from the same spot. Um, so that's interesting. Three, two, one. All right, I went three, you went four. I only went three because I just feel like there's there's funny business going on along the top of this that's that looks so fake and HDR-ish to the me. The contrast in the clouds. The clouds with the dark blue sky, but then still showing detail in the rock. It just doesn't really feel remotely real to me. And so for that reason, it just feels super photoshopped. And I will say this, Peter Lick does a lot of the stuff, you know, famous uh, landscape photographer, prints art HDR images that look like this. And when you see them on the computer screen, they look bad to me. And then when I go to his gallery and I see them printed huge with the professional lighting, yeah. it's they don't look bad to me anymore. And I don't know what it is. There's something about shrinking it down. It's a, like really easy to see the blooming. Like if you if you look along the top of this thing, you can just see this blooming, this area of contrast where it just kind of feels like he's recovered the shadows. Some about here on the far left? I'm talking about like here on the slanted part. You can just see like right along the darkest part of the rock. Oh, and it meets yeah. the blue sky. You can just see like There's a little halo. There's something about the rock behind the main rock face that maybe the sun's able to hit that and give it that light, but it feels like well, you need more contrast. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the top of that second rock in the background, you'll notice how in it's the dark. upper left of it, yeah. it's dark, and in the upper right of it, it's bright. It just it just seems like That's the one sloppy. area of this photo that kind of throws me off. Um, I still think it's a really cool shot. I agree. I agree. So but the next image we're about to see is the same location. Yeah, so you can see if you like so it better or worse. So I'm going to throw a five or a three. And this one is rated 3.52. So let's see the, the next shot. We've got obviously totally different looking water here. But in a way, I feel like we've got even more unrealistic shadow recovery. Sun positions the same spot. Interesting. I think I'm ready. All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. So I gave it three again, but I think I like the previous shot better. I agree. I definitely like the composition better of the previous shot. I like the you know, the overall processing of the file. This one, when you look at the rock face, it's completely opposite of the sun. It's got so much detail in it. It almost I looks know. like it's being lit by another light source. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But this is one of those things where if you're a photographer and you have an image like this in your portfolio, even if it's not the best shot, this location is so exotic that I think if you had 10 pictures like this, you're gonna come across as a professional travel photographer who's been all over the world. Like the location's so beautiful yeah. that it kind of belongs in your portfolio because of that, you know? Right. I will also make the argument though, if this is a shot that's taken over and over and over again, there gets a point where it's so cliche that it, it also kind of loses something, you know? Those yeah. shots where it's super exotic, but you've seen it a thousand times. But your client base, the people who would actually they buy a print of this, they've never seen it before. All right, community gave this one 3.41. So this was a slight uh, underdog to the Do you other think shot. you could take this file and process it to be better? Or do you think there's enough things? I don't know. It? I'm I'm not I'm not great at retouching landscape stuff. And uh, I don't know that I have the patience either. So I'm just going to go ahead and say no. See, what I would like, because, no. you know, they want to hear some critique. I would love to have a multiple exposure shot where the sun was a little higher and it's casting more highlights maybe on the foreground. Yeah. And you know, a lot of what makes these images look so incredible 
is exactly that. You're, you're shooting at different times of day so that the light, the single light source, the sun, is able to cast highlights in places that make the image come alive. And when you have the sun right behind the rock face, all you can really do is kind of slide the shadows up and reveal some detail, but you're not really adding that light painting look, you know? Right. It's kind of the difference between what Mike does, light painting a house versus just HD ring the, the scene. Right. You never quite get the detail back. Next up. Is this sharp? This doesn't even look very high res. It's actually ultra high res. If you zoom in, you'll see m much more detail than you're accustomed really? to. Really? Like the birds don't even look sharp. That's because it's a long exposure. Remember what we were critiquing today? Oh, unsharp photos. That's right. No. We're critiquing long exposures, hmm. and that rock is super sharp. I think this is like the same <clears throat> island I look out when I do dishes. That is true. So this is the uh, shot that I did for this uh, filter uh, video that I just released. If you haven't seen it, uh, you can check it out. Just go to the F-Stoppers YouTube channel. You'll see it there. Um, I took another image that I would, I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of people prefer my other image because it's like crazier looking. Yeah. I personally liked this because it was so calm and subdued. Are you ready to rate it? And I swear to God, if you rate this low, you, you better leave the country again. You better, but you better go to Europe. I didn't this leave time. the country. I just went to you better, Alabama, which you better feels like another country. country. You better leave. No, the I'm ready. I'm ready. Time. Let's do it. Three, two, one. I agree. Three stars. So a low three. Careful. Low three. So um, it's kind of difficult for me to rate this, but then also you know rate it kind of low and give it the three, which is just a solid image, like potentially good enough for your portfolio, while at the same time saying this might be my favorite landscape photo that I've ever taken mm -hmm. in its simplicity. You like this better than the one you did in Argentina with the, the fence and the road and everything? <laughs> the one I shot on the iPhone? The uh, on your, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like that one okay. I just, I feel like the second someone else has taken the picture, it's, it's like off the table for me. And I can take it and I can take a great shot and my wife's gonna love it, but to me, it's cheating. And I what do don't you mean when someone somebody else takes it like, like when I when I took the picture in Argentina I'm like this a mountain looks incredible but every photographer who's ever been here has taken this shot of this mountain so even oh. though I like this picture but they did, they probably didn't put the camera where you did that's not where the, all the photographers maybe, were they but were even all still even still I just feel like this is unique somebody's it's, had to have taken this picture before it's the most obvious thing you can do. There's like the rocks and the island. I know, but you'd have to be right where I was to get the parallax right. You'd have to have at least a 200 millimeter lens, and then you'd have to have over 20 stops of neutral density filter to blur it like this. And maybe all of this stuff doesn't even matter. Yeah, it's like all that matters is the finished product and what does the public say about the image. And that's why I said the last shot that I took in the video uh, before I took this one, the average person would probably like. But I... I don't like a lot of landscape photos because they're just so over the top and contrasty and crunchy looking and oh, look at the sunburst and all this stuff. This is just calm and subdued. I do agree with that. This is more calm and subdued. I just, I'm trying to think, maybe it's the lack of foreground or something. Like it's it's a three, but I don't I don't see it going above that. I mean, I, I, I agree. I gave it a four. I, I can't honestly say like, Wow, this is excellent. But at the same time, I have to say, I kind of want to print this and like. Maybe hang if it you up. like composited some birds in flight over this, you know, twenty stop, <laughs> I ten do, stop. I neutrals. do like I do like birds. All right, so this isn't even rated because uh, I didn't even submit this to the. Oh my to gosh, the they're gonna be so upset that you put one in the critique <laughs> that's not even up for. I know, I know. I think a lot of people, I was, I, was, I was writing a post about this on the last critique that a lot of people view this very seriously as a contest because it's under the contest tab. Yeah. And I always just thought this is just us critiquing work and then, oh, we'll give away a tutorial. Right. And so many people are saying like they want to rate high because they want to be in the top 20 and we should only show the top 20, but that's never what we've done. We that always, is never what we've done, although I will say 
uh, since moving to Puerto Rico, you know, now we are the ones who always choose the images. Before, David would always choose like 50% horrible pictures yeah. and 50% medium to good pictures. I, there's only so much you can say about a horrible photo. Well, that's another thing people are always talking about. If you give a one star, you should be able to justify it. And I'm like, one stars are so far from being in your portfolio <laughs> so that and many times it's like, don't take this photo. <laughs> right. You know, and move on of, to something else. What kind else? of critique is that? So you want to have a two, three year, right. you know, four. Right. So I tried to have, I, like, I added a few pictures in here that were rated lowly, but they're not horrible. They're all, they're all decent. All right, moving on. Let's, let's uh, rate this devil woman. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. You give this a three. Yeah, you're giving it a two, huh? I don't think it's good enough for what it's trying to be. If it's trying to be some graphic art that has the light painting and it's kind of a commercial, you know, I could see this being for uh, like Fireball or something, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it has enough going for it. You need to have a little detail in her face or you need to have her in a scene or something. This just kind of feels like this was done at the frat house. The guy who has an LED light. Like, I don't think the, it, we were talking about the next critique's production. Yeah. I don't think this has that yet, you know? Like, she looks great. She's obviously in good shape. And it's got a mood. There's some mood going on here. But I just feel like the tail looks cheesy. I'd like to see more of the foreground. I'd like to even maybe see this composited in a scene where, like, She's in some crazy scene, but or some lights just on her eyes. You know, when the people, they do the little pop flash that cuts across the face. I just want something. I'm not saying this is, like, horrible. Maybe two sounds really rough. But I don't know that if you were scrolling through a high-end portfolio and you got to this, you'd be like, oh. It, it feels like a test shot to me. So... I agree with you to an extent, but I'm also going to say that there's something about the grunginess <clears throat> and simplicity of this image that almost makes it extra commercially viable to me. I could see this doing really well as a stock photograph, even without the tail and ears. There's just something about this form and the smoke and the red that just kind of feels like fire or dancing or party or rave and I could just see a lot of companies needing this and and I could also see this being shot in a uh, series of some kind where the girls doing a bunch of different poses yeah. and then you could you know you could use a bunch of these different poses so there's aspects of this that I really really like and I keep jumping back and forth between thinking should the tail and ears be red also? Is the fact that it's blue, does that make it seem cheaper? Or do I like the fact that it's blue? I'm not really sure. Well, you bring up an interesting point because we did a video a couple months ago on which images made you the most amount of money. And sometimes images that sell, and especially in the stock world, are still not necessarily images that you would want in your portfolio. Like this yeah. could sell well on a stock website and maybe you make hundreds and hundreds of dollars or thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on this image, but it still might not be good enough to be in your portfolio to set you apart from other photographers, you know? I agree. And so it's 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 like the image you've made the most amount of money is like a hand doing a signature. Mm -hmm. My mother's hand and it's signing a, great a sheet of paper. And it's a great stock image, but it mm -hmm. doesn't belong in your portfolio. So Yeah, there's just this is certainly more interesting than a hand signing a sheet of paper, but we can move on. Community gives it 2.38. Oh. Now this this kind of reminds me of my shot, you know, with like the just rock a little in the bit middle. better though. Yes, I would say. Um, a lot better. I love this. Like how much, like did they erase the whole scene? Is this, this is like the, the Morris Lighthouse where it's like this lighthouse that's sitting on this one little patch of land. Is yeah. that what's going on here? Yeah, I don't know how much funny business has been done or to make this. Or has the fog covered the horizon or? But it's, it's beautiful in its simplicity. Are you ready? Ah, uh, yeah. Three, two, one. I, like I thought about giving this a five. This might be my favorite image so far of this critique. Um, I could see this being a movie poster. I could see this being the cover of a book. Um, 
I love it. I mean, you know, number five we always say is unforgettable, and I feel like this this kind of has that for me. Yeah, I was debating with Pi. Like, the difference between a four and a five is so small that I never feel offended if somebody goes five and I go four. Um, I don't know that this is super memorable to me. I'll probably forget it here in 20 minutes, but... <laughs> I do like it, and, and when I like hold it far away, like all the tones and everything, like it's it's a really cool shot. If you took this shot, uh, definitely comment on YouTube if you want to, but also definitely on the critique itself on F Stoppers, how this was done, how much of this is real versus how much of this. Well, because what's interesting fake. is this looks like one of those two-minute exposures, right? But then you have these geese, these ducks, whatever, that are there. And they're blurry, but they're not as blurry. Like, there's a bird sitting back there in the background. Yeah, but my shot, people were calling me out in my shot saying that, you know, mine's not an eight-minute exposure. But look at the birds in mine. They, I can't believe how still they were for minutes. Hmm. They just sat there. It's wild. So um, some birds are lazy, lazy birds. Hmm. All right. Uh, community gives it. 3.46, so one of the higher rated images. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. I'm between a two and a three. I should probably give this a two. And I feel like, you know, it's done well, but I, I do not like this composition at all. That's the number one thing that's killing it for me. And the me. truth is, if I give my image a three, then I have to give this a two. Okay. Because there's no way I want to print this. Yeah, I just feel like the whole subject matter, like at least half of the subject matter, is this foreground that is just, it's all blurry water. It doesn't have any detail. There's no interest there. And with the, I guess it's like, uh, what do you call Snow? it? Snow? Well, not snow, but it's like a iceberg, not an iceberg, but a glacier. Yeah, I can't think straight. And like this top part, it's a glacier. It's you're not able to see enough of the glacier. And then it's not on the right hand side. It just feels like it's an object that is interrupting the photo more than it is enhancing the photo. I agree 100 percent. Yeah, it just kind of feels like a mistake. Having just, that. It's like I want the camera 20 feet higher or 10 feet higher. It's kind of hard to tell, but I just want the camera raised so that you can see more of like a mid field of vision, you know, view. Like you have a foreground, you have a background, but I want something else to like lead you to the mountain. I agree. The but top of the picture looks great though. Yeah, interesting clouds, very interesting clouds. Look at this though, community score, 3.44. They love it. One of the higher rated images for this critique and I am not a huge fan of this. Next up. Where do you think this photo is? I don't have a damn clue. If you had to guess, does this give you a vibe of some part of the world? I mean, you know, the 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 leaves and stuff always make me think of the mountains that I, you know, kind of grew up in mm. and, you know, the Asheville area and stuff, but I don't recall seeing anything like this in North Carolina or Virginia. So I don't know why, but when I see this, it just makes me think of like Asia. It looks like China or something like. So, yeah. Maybe yeah. it's because when you go to Chinese restaurants, they always have stuff like this printed. <laughs> that's true. Maybe. And it's like what... weird backlit images. Yeah. And you're like, where do you get this stuff? I hear Chinese music like playing right now <laughs> as I look at this point. image. But who knows? Maybe this is in an Appalachian County country. Where? Appalachia. Appalachia. That's... All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, three stars. We both agree this could show up in any mediocre Chinese restaurant. Um, it feels a little dark and contrasty to me. Does it feel? Yeah, I was thinking it feels very dark, and yet there's a lot of light exactly where you need it. Like, yeah. all the water is super bright and white, and I'm thinking, is that really what it would look like? And... I feel like with this image, it this is probably the shot that everyone gets of this location. I mean, it's so crazy. Yeah. But there's so much going on that it almost starts to lose something. Um, 
because there's so many little waterfalls and stuff and it just all kind of blends together into a mush to me. So although this is incredible and I can't believe this exists on this planet. Yeah, it's like the most romantic location ever. Yeah, but I'm not loving it. It feels like Chinese restaurant. I think so. what it is is we always talk about leading lines and landscape photographers are always talking about how lines lead you through the image. I just think there's, like you said, there's too much going on and the leading lines seem to just be like straight up, you know? It's just these waterfalls. Mm. And then you want to I make the bridge, right the bridge needs to be like the center of attention because it's the one man-made thing here, but there's not a whole lot going on that's super interesting right there. I mean, it's interesting enough, but it doesn't work in harmony. What's the most interesting part of this entire image to you? I really like all these leaves like on the side of the cliff. On what side? Like maybe the left side? So that's the most interesting part to me. The waterfall that's on the upper left that's hitting the green and yellow and then the beautiful red leaves right below that. That's the most interesting part of this entire shot to me. And I'm just wondering, is there some other composition which kind of makes that the the, the main view of this entire it's shot? It's crazy to crop out so many of those I know, it, it <laughs> seems blasphemous to do that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, tough, a tough location because it's so beautiful in person, but on camera, it just kind of looks jumbled. Community 3.45. Now, Paris is one of the few locations in the world that I have not been. I've oh, never, really? I've I never keep been thinking that we've been there. No. France is one of those places where I've really reserved it to where, like, I want to go, like, with my fiancé or wife. And it's like, I want it to be this romantic thing. And, unfortunately, I'm always with you and Alaya. And I'm like, I don't want to go with, or I don't want to, you guys just went to like Euro, like Euro Disney or. No, we also went to Paris and we hung out in Paris. Is that not here? It, it's like north it's of like here. It's like right there. We also you went probably to Disneyland Paris. Dis Disney World over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, tr the truth is I've been to Paris, I think three or four times now. And I'm not even sure where the shot is taken. This has to be in the middle of the most touristic part. Yeah, I mean, if you zoom in, you can actually see all the people walking around, which is pretty cool, you know? It's not like they, they went here really early in the morning and got this shot. They shot this while people were walking around, but a long exposure made it work. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. I mean, this is super cool. I love the graphic composition. Also, super interesting and... Talk about leading lines. Yeah, but there's also lots of funny business going on here with the post-processing. I mean, check out the lighting that's on the right wall and on the left wall. It's like the sun's coming from both sides. So I do not know how this was made. I would imagine that, you know, photographs are taken throughout the day and combined together. Well, the sun's clearly on the left side of the frame because we have a shadow on the ground and the light okay. on the right side seems natural, but they've dodged the left side maybe maybe to bring out those details in a shot like this with the symmetry and the black and white conversion i don't know that that really bothers me all that much like what would you have that side go no no darker? i really like it the way it is it just doesn't look real but so sometimes you like the funny business uh you know i i yeah yeah I, I, maybe i'm sounding a little hypocritical because in in the other shot i could see the blooming and everything it was like cheap looking Photoshop to me. Yeah. Whereas this feels more like, first of all, I'm not seeing any blooming or any, you know, crappy Photoshop work, but it also feels kind of like graphic art to me more than it's trying to be this realistic over the top landscape photo. So I don't know if that's what makes I like me about this photo and watch, everyone's gonna say how wrong I am, but I'll I'll join right behind them. This this isn't a composition I see often in one of the most photographed places in the world. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, how the heck have I not seen this shot? Or have I seen this shot a hundred times, but there's been a million people in the way, so I just never take the picture. And this photographer thought to do a long exposure to get all those people out of the way. I, every shot I see is either from Notre Dame shooting far away or it's super close to the Eiffel Tower and you're shooting wide and yeah. it's at night and everything. Like, this is just a location that I haven't seen. I'm sure it's popular, but it's not overshot. And because it's lined up so perfectly, I really like this. Community gives it 3.05. Rough crowd. All right, now, I, I don't know what the heck's going on here. 
in terms of uh, long exposure versus relatively quick exposure because it looks like in the upper left and upper right, we've got some cloud movement, you know, that would be a really long exposure. But then we've got lots of detail in these puffy clouds. Could you make the argument that all that detail is coming from lightning strikes? I think so. Really? I mean, either this is two images that are composited together, I'm gonna, I'm or gonna, multiple shots, because I'm gonna sometimes the lightning shots. bolts, like maybe they caught five different lightning bolts and they've tried to put them all in there. Yeah. Um, or it's just super dark out and that long exposure did all of the, the motion in the clouds above. And then when the lightning did hit, you got this. But I've actually photographed quite a bit of lightning. And to get that much detail and lighting in one amazing cloud like that just seems a little seems too good to be true a little huh? too good to be true but we're on to you photographer are you ready to rate it i think so three two one really oh yeah i mean i just don't, I don't know. think the foreground's interesting enough That's my it's not a critique. great skyline i actually have one of the first shots I've ever taken with like a little point and shoot before I was even a professional uh, photographer is an image like this, but it's in color. And I looked, I just saw it recently. It was like on my Flickr website or something. And I'm like, ooh, that's not that good. But I well, never thought, is, you know. This is much better than that shot. Um, I just think like with it being black and white, may, maybe if you could just zoom past, would it, it, would it be better just to completely crop out the... Just to have the sky alone and no... I don't know. I just these shots just feel like science textbooks to me. I agree. I don't know that I've ever seen a beautiful, elegant shot of lightning. It seems like, like you said, it every shot of lightning and storms that I've seen. Not storms. I've seen some beautiful storm yeah. photography, but lightning pictures always feel like scientific photos more than they feel like art. There's um, got to be some out there where it's like I'm sure beautiful. Are. The sun's coming through and lighting yeah. Empire State, and then you just have like one bolt. Yeah, and it's amazing. not over the top, but this is very over the top. Community gives it 3.41. They like that lightning. We've had some crazy lightning here. Yes, we Sometimes have. Sometimes I'll just be working and I'll just hear the loudest crash, and it's like, man, that must have hit our house. It's pretty insane. While you were gone, the power went out here for like two days. Was the internet down too? People were saying. Yeah, the internet was like in and out and stuff. And uh, they figured out what it was. It was a snake slithered into like a power box and touched two things oh and gosh. like blew up, <laughs> blew up some transformer in our neighborhood. And they had picture of the snake. Oh. And we're, everybody's like, what? There, there's not supposed to be snakes in Puerto Rico. And they were like, oh, that's like the one that's snake the one we snake. have here. <clears throat> All right, are you ready? I am ready. Does this even look like a long exposure, first of all? <laughs> Did I, I get scammed the here? clouds in the bottom, maybe. Okay. Three, two, one. I'm between a three and a four. I don't see how you can just give this three. I, I mean, think, this is I think you're right. Shot. I think you're right. This is a four. You know who's got a five of this location? Elia Licardi, one of his first shots, he shot this at night, right? With the Milky Way above it, or, or maybe... Uh, I don't even know, is the Milky Way there? Is it just like the sky's a little more blue, but it, it's an incredible... Or he does the, sky, the star trails, I think. Either way. It's, it's like so a memorable shot. that you and I are having a hard time remembering exactly what it is. Yeah. But it is a world-class version of this location. This location is just so amazing. And the lighting that hits the side of these mountains and everything. I've seen so many people take this photograph... And tons of them look good, you yeah. know. I've seen some crappy looking photos at Kirchhoffel, you know, in Iceland, but most of the pictures I see here look amazing. Um, now, is it a long exposure? Now, look, if you look down, it looks like uh, that's water in the bottom right. The bottom right. Like down here? Those are clouds. I don't think there's water there. Oh, really? That's not the ocean or something? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure, to be honest. Well, I mean, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of strange to have trees that big close to the ocean. I think this is, I don't exactly know where this is, but isn't this like a sunken volcano? 
It appears to be. I think I think it's just all lava fields, but it's hmm. not to say that it could be a lake or something around it. Well, I definitely think it's a long exposure, though. It's 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 like maybe it's thirty seconds or two minutes. Really? Because the clouds are blurry enough. All right, all right. I'm wrong. You're right. Uh, community gives this one three point four. I think it's beautiful location, beautiful lighting, very. This is a simple, simple one. Yeah, this isn't too over the top. All right, next up. Speaking of simple and subdued. Yeah, I don't really know what this is, but I had to add it to the critique. Are you ready? Yes, but Three, I do two, not know what one. this is. Two stars, we agree? What is happening in this photo? I, you know, I think it's just some dam that... Like, dam? Damn. That I don't understand how it's being lit. I mean, is this a fountain? Like, it's not at Disneyland, because you would know. But <laughs> is it at another theme park? <laughs> I would know that, too. Um, yeah, I don't know any, anything about uh, theme park dams. But um, I feel like what this shot is probably missing most of all is something in the sky, a little detail in the sky. Yeah, it's like they've crushed the blacks well, I think this is just at night. I think this is being lit. You know, I, I don't know if this is some something you can go to and they're lighting it to make it look cool at night. And then this is just the shot you got. But I want to see a little bit more compositing of some sort of, you know, night sky up there. I know you're going to have to do some funny business, but I think the shot needs something before it hits your portfolio. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of this one. Community gives it 2.12. We're back to Iceland. You think you could build a church in Iceland and then just pay for admission like near it? And they're just like, man, we built this like- Just for photographers? We built this $5,000 church and we've like, we've made millions. <laughs> just on like, you need to pay to get access to the road that goes down there. I could definitely see something like that working. You know what I saw recently? Tell me. I was I just redid my website. Yep. And while researching what I should do with my own website, I came across some of my favorite photographers of all time. And I can't remember who this one was because I think it just like led me down this, you know. Lee Morris? No, it definitely wasn't you. But oh. it was a photographer who had shot that plane in Iceland. Okay. From like 1990. It was like way before anyone went to Iceland. And you're like, there's the plane. Okay. You could tell it was shot on film. And it looked totally different. There's no graffiti, and it was like in its finest shape, you know. Yeah. I don't know when that thing crashed there. Yeah. I don't know if that was World War II or if it was something later, but I was like, whoa, like, this thing's been photographed that many times. It was just interesting to know that this wasn't taken in the last 10 or 15 years. This was taken like 20 years ago. Wow, like yeah. 30 years ago, maybe. This was not one of those images. Are you ready? Uh, I think I am. Three, two, one... Three or two? Yeah, I'm yeah I feel the same way. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but it feels a little overexposed to me. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I just feel like, uh, I feel like the northern lights a little bit, especially towards the bottom, are just a little bright, not too bright. Um, and then the sky itself, I, I think I might like to crush those mid-tones a little bit in the sky. And then... The black church, this side of it, I feel like it's a little bright, and then maybe I'd like to see a little bit more detail on the opposite side of the church, and maybe in the foreground. So, um, you know, th this just kind of feels like a long exposure straight out of camera almost, but I think with just a few seconds of Lightroom adjustments, I think uh, this could be a lot more interesting. This is something I always debate when I get into post with star shots, and maybe, I don't know if you've shot enough of these to have an opinion, but would you remove the little star trails or the, the jet trails? I shooting would. Shooting stars, whatever whatever is causing the motion in the sky? I would. I feel like I go to that, and it's kind of like a dust spot, and you just think, like, it, it takes me to that part of the photo more than it should. And then I think that, yeah, I think the building's exposed a little too much. It just looks like you put a strobe on the church, or the car lights are on there. I almost want that to be a warmer color or like a blue, like a darker, like even the green tone. It just feels like flash to me. It kind of takes me out of it. And I remember when we were in New Zealand with Elia, he was shooting some church with the stars above it. And we, we shined, shone, 
We shone. We shone our shone did. <laughs> iPhone flashlight through the opposite side of the church to make the windows glow. Yeah. And I think that made the image. Yeah. I think that made it so much better. Um, and I feel like this, this is probably one you could do that because yeah. I assume it's the same three windows on the other side. Yeah. All right. Community gives it 3.23. Whoa. We get to leave the landscape world. I think we've had like a swimming shot in the last three or four critiques. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Some better than others. Hmm. Something about this looks so freaky. When you really start looking at these <laughs> these uh, swimmers' bodies, I mean, it looks like a well, I just, horror movie. Or I was watching the, uh, I'm curious to know if this is on Disney+, Plus, but I'm a big fan of the Disney Halloween, I think it's called Treats. And it's yeah. like their best little segments. <clears throat> Me too. And the first one of the first ones they have, I think, is from Fantasia. But it's like all the demons like yes. flying. That's what this looks like. Yes, it does. You just turn it a little sideways. Um, are you ready to rate it? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Four stars. We agree. I really like this. Other than the uh, demon swimmers that are kind of freaking me out, <laughs> I feel like this is beautiful, fine art. Are they... In like swimming uniforms, <laughs> in like or something? long underwear, or something. Or are they sunburned? Like, how do you get those tones out of human skin? I do not know. It's very strange. But uh, there's I like one it. picture in this uh, critique that I don't know. Maybe we'll see it here, but we're getting towards the end. And it was a long exposure with koi fish swimming. I don't know if you saw that image. I do remember. But I thought that like one that. was pretty cool. Maybe. I don't know if it's in this, it's but it re this shot reminds me of that. And I remember looking at it early on because I don't have time to look at all these pictures, but I saw the first day and I was like, that's a pretty cool shot with the koi fish doing a similar effect. So. All right, community 3.21. So Patrick, after our huge fight where we almost broke up yes. in the last critique, mm -hmm. you left. Like any you good packed your bags. Like any good marriage, I was like, I'm out of here. Yeah, and Don't come you. chasing after me. Don't call. Don't text. Yeah, so a few weeks ago, I thought, hey, I want to go to an Alabama game. I'm a big Alabama football fan. I said, I will go to the biggest game of the year, the LSU-Alabama game. Paid all this money to fly to Atlanta to drive out there, and we got our asses beat. But I will say, they played well. We still might be in it. But just being in a stadium, I mean, it's like one of the largest stadiums in the country. I think it's like 106,000 people. Good gosh. I mean, you think of that Al the, the, the Bon Jovi concert we went to, the Meadowlands. Yeah. It's like Double much, that. much bigger than that. Yeah, that's For, what I And imagine. everyone there is like fanatical, right? And so it's just the cheers and everything. And it's, it's pretty crazy. I feel like I really missed out in life because I went to a like fake college that wasn't a real experience yeah. for education. So, so did or, I. Or, did uh, you have a football team? No. 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 And I feel like I really missed out. Like I've never been a big sports guy. The only sport I watch is mixed martial arts. And then I do sports. I play lots of sports, but I cannot get excited about watching other people play sports. Yeah. I don't like it. But when I see you and normal people get excited about football, it bums me out because I'm like, man, I should have that like feeling of rooting for my team, and we're all. And what's a weird is we've gone some. We've gone to some big, you know, UFC fights. At least one that you know, it's it's silent there. <laughs> I also went to the uh, Atlanta Aquarium on the That's way home. That's crazy. You've right? been to that, right? That's amazing. Oh my gosh! Like I, I've been to some amazing places where you see dolphins we've swam with dolphins yeah i know the aquarium i mean if if you have any reason to stop off in atlanta you've got to go see this place and it was i think 40 bucks 30 i know bucks to it, see it. it should be like a wonder of the world i feel like it's it that crazy it's i think it's the only place in the world that has whale sharks in captivity yeah they had two or three of them it's crazy there's an area where you can see over the aquarium it's like a little like portholes, you know, it's like a airplane hangar. It's like the biggest swimming pool you've ever seen. And you'll just see like little fins and stuff. And you're like, there's so much wildlife in there. It's, it's pretty incredible. Well, you can actually pay to scuba dive in that tank. There and are people swimming in it. It's yeah. not that much money. I don't remember. It might be like 300, 400 bucks or something. So I have said for years, we got to scuba dive in that tank. We got to review something. We get I just, some portfolio images in there. I know we could. I just got the new GoPro 8. 
I got to do some video with that. Back to Atlanta right now. All I right. Just... Well, we got to figure something out. Oh my gosh, what is happening here? Like, I can't even tell where the horizon is in this photo. I know. I think I know where it is, but I'm not sure. I love these photographs, and I think it's again because I kind of grew up in the mountains and. I've seen this happen a few times. Does it look like this, or does the long it exposure can. really make no, it? No, it can look like that. It's crazy. All right, I think I'm ready. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. Um, I love it. I love it. This is something that I would love to print and hang on the wall. Um, it's simple. It's calm. But there is detail if you look for it. The lighting's beautiful. The color's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I, you know, maybe maybe what would make me give it a five is if, if it were like a little bit more uniform or perfect or something, but I mean, I, I love it the way it is. I keep thinking, I don't know if it'd be better or worse, and maybe we have images like this in our community, but if you had more fog covering almost like all fog, but then just a hint of a tree to where you're like, oh, whoa, like if this was all fog and you didn't know what you're looking at, you couldn't have a sense of scale. But yep. then if you just had just the middle trees, you still probably wouldn't exactly know how big the trees are. This is great as is. I, I'm just thinking out loud that if the left side was also all fog, this would be pretty badass too. Really Very nice. well done. Community gives it 3.18. 3 and the final image of the critique. This definitely makes me feel like it's in China. I don't know what it is, but something about it. Yeah. Three, two, one. You went three, I went four. I like it. I think the composition's great. I love the mood. It's just one of those, I don't know if I want to crop in and make it tighter. Maybe that takes away from it. But I, I just think if I was scrolling through someone's portfolio and it's all, we say long exposures, but if it's all landscape stuff like this, I think this is one I would probably stay on for a less amount of time than some of the other images. I almost feel like this is one where I'd love to see a guy in a trench coat walking or, or something like a human element. Tr trench coat? Well, you know, I'm, how would you dress somebody so they don't look goofy in this shot? Like a samurai. No, I mean, that would be, <laughs> I, that'd be a different direction. I'm just thinking like a lone guy just walk. This feels like a cold image. This I, Maybe this is summertime. What about like an overweight American neck beard? Like with a camera? A camera and he's carrying like a, a plushy uh, pillow with some Japanese anime girl and he's got like the katana on his back. Mm. That could work. That could be cool. Or like the one Japanese photographer who's like bent over in a really <laughs> weird way. I don't know. I don't know why a person in this shot just seems like it would make this stronger. All right, uh, that wraps up this critique. This one got a 3.48. Again, if you would like to be a part of the next critique, uh, we're doing styled images. So we want images where thought has been put into it. We want planning. We want styling. We want hair, makeup, wardrobe. Set but building. Are we locking this into portraits? Could no. you be a food photographer and still submit to yep. this? Yep, but you better not just take a damn picture of a plate on a white. You yeah, know, there we can't want the be table. stuff that's out of place, and you're like, why didn't they make that no, person look styled. good? No, styled. We want the whole thing to be thought out. We want a lot of work put into this. We want polished images. I'm sure we're going to see some <laughs> polished images. Yeah, we're going to see some horrible <laughs> shots. We always do. But that's what the critique is all about. That's why it's fun to watch. And uh, make sure you guys head over to fstoppers.com slash store if you want to check out our full-length photography tutorials that are for sale and you can dream about the ones that you're going to get for free when you either get the highest rated image or one random image chosen. We will see you next time.